Welcome back to our I want to go to Russia course where we break down Russia and prepare you guys to go to Russia one day. Today we're going to talk about Russian culture. Culture plays a big part in our lives and today we're going to break down culture of Russians. In particular today we're going to talk about arts and what kind of role arts play in Russians life. First I want to start out with literature. Literature plays a huge part in our culture. Russians do read a lot and we read a lot in school. We start in fifth grade, which is like middle school, all the way to high school. For example, I guess like three, three books would be Mertve Dushi, Vaina i Mir, and let's say Gore Atuma. You have them on the screen right now. And we read a lot, a lot more. We link up a blog post in the description with the whole kind of curriculum of books of Russian literature. If you're interested to check them out, it's in the description, you can find it there. And you can find a whole list of what Russian, Russians are made to read in school. And it's a pretty long list there. We read almost every single year, maybe like three or four books. And we not only read, we discuss it. We talk about what did the author kind of intend to say? What's the meaning of all of this? What's the key takeaways from the books? So we're not just reading, we're also analyzing literature. And in our everyday lives, we refer back to the books a lot because we read them all and we all know what's in the books. And everybody knows those kinds of phrases. For example, in Taras Bulba, the main character says, Ya tibia paradil, ya tibia ilbiu, which means I brought you into the world and I can take you out. Of course, not as a direct meaning, but you get the point. We refer a lot to the books. Of course, you guys as foreigners, as tourists in Russia, you don't have to know all of that, but at least be prepared to hear certain things that may not make sense within the context. Just know that that can be from a certain book that we refer back to. Another pillar of Russian art that everybody knows is cartoons. We all grow up watching the same cartoons, or at least people of around my age, I'm 24 years old, maybe like 20 year olds and, and onward, they all, we all grew up on the same cartoons. For example, Winnie Pooh, Troya is Prostakvashina, and let's say Krakadil, Genna i Chiburashka. All three cartoons, and of course a lot more, is what we all watch and we all know the characters of, and we love it, love it dearly. And again, we as Russians use a lot of references from the cartoons as well. So I think that you need to know at least a few of them, at least watch a few of them. You can look up a list of Russian cartoons. You can again refer to our blog post that we link up in the description where there's a list of cartoons that you guys should watch. And maybe if you watch something, you will understand what Russians watch when they grow up and you can kind of understand Russians a bit, a bit more. So cartoons is also a great pillar of Russian art. Next up is museums. All around Russia, we have a lot of museums. And in fact, we have a culture of going to different museums to check things out. For example, there's a lot of great museums in Moscow. Let's talk about those. There's a lot of different museums in Moscow. For example, you see historical museum right now on your screens. It's located near Kremlin and you might have seen it on some photos beforehand. We went inside and it's pretty interesting on the inside too. But there's a lot of museums that you can go to depending on your interest. My wife likes Pushkin, so we went into Pushkin Museum and it was pretty cool as well. And St. Petersburg also has some great museums and historical places like Petergof. Pretty famous one, it's like a park where you can walk around and then also go and visit the palace that's there too. And of course the famous Hermitage. It's a great, great museum with a lot of exhibitions there where you can walk around for a long time and enjoy art. And another pillar of Russian culture is proverbs and sayings. We say them a lot in our everyday lives and we use them a whole, whole lot. For example, без труда не выловишь и рыбки из пруда, which means you cannot catch a fish out of a pond without labor or without work. We use this one, for example, when we're talking about that you have to, you have to do something for you to accomplish certain things. You have to put in work for you to accomplish certain things. And if you guys want to know more proverbs that we use in the everyday lives, check out our Be Fluent class with the first link in the description. We put together a whole travel course, Russian for traveling, that will give you grammar, vocabulary, and culture necessary for you guys to survive in Russia and for you guys to have a good time in Russia. Of course, including proverbs and sayings that we use a lot. 
check it out with the first link in the description. And now let's talk about famous personalities, people, bands, music, like singers and actors and things like that. First, let's talk about Russian writers, Russian classics. I'll maybe mention three of them. First is Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky is widely known around, around the world and his most, I guess, famous writing is Преступление и наказание, which is, uh, again, something that we are made to read during school. Then it's Lev Tolstoy, also an author who wrote War, War and Peace, which is in Russian, Vaina i Mir. And lastly, I want to bring up Alexander Pushkin, which is, who is the main kind of writer, poet in Russia. His poetry is truly masterful, and he is a great, great, great artist and great writer. All Russians know Pushkin, read Pushkin. We learn his, his poems and things like that. He's a great, great um, person, Russian, Russian famous person. Then, now let's talk about Russian music. I want to first start out with a few of rock bands from USSR years. First one being Mashina Vremini. Mashina Vremini is a rock band that's still actually existing. They are more than 50 years old as a band. Of course, now they're not writing as much music. They are a bit older now, but during USSR, their music was pretty, pretty influential. Then we have a band that you might know already, which is Kino. Kino is a rock band that I think is the most... If you think of Russian music, you think of Kino as a foreigner, because that music is kind of uh, spread all around the world as well. And in Russia, it was pretty influential, it was, and it was kind of like pop, pop music in USSR. And lastly, I want to talk about Vysotsky. Vysotsky, he's a singer, he's an actor, also a poet and other things, but he's mostly known for his singing. And his music is very unique and very interesting. He's like telling a story in his music. So I recommend you guys check out all three of them, Mashina Vremini, Kino, and Vysotsky, and listen to that music to kind of get a feel for that kind of USSR, older Russian music. But let's now talk about more of contemporary music that we listen to now. First is a band called Little Big, which is a band that I think uh, foreigners know as well. It's kind of like punk, rave, pop as well, kind of uh, rock and pop mixed together. They are pretty rebellious and their music is kind of out there with the music videos. They're pretty much trolling the industry, but they are very popular right now. They're touring the world. And I, I'm not a person, not a fan of them because it's just simply not my type of music, but their music is definitely catchy and it's pretty interesting to listen to. Next up, if you're more into hip hop or rap, I recommend you check out Miyagi and Andy Panda, who is like a hip hop kind of a group, or it's, I think it's two people there, and they're making hip hop. Again, not my type of music, but it's, they're pretty good. I listened to a couple of their songs. I recommend you guys check them out if you're into rap. And lastly, I want to mention Margin Stern, who is like a rap, but more of a pop kind of music, again, trolling the industry with his out of, out of the box kind of music, a bit too provoking as well. His music is, I think, not meant to be the most artsy. I think it's mostly for entertainment, but it's still pretty good songs and young people listen to him a lot. So check it out as well. And lastly, let's talk about most famous scientists or people who created something for the world and not just for Russia. First is Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin is the first ever person to fly into space or to get into space. And uh, he flew, we have a whole day dedicated to, to the space kind of exploration, which is 12th of April. And he went into space on the 12th of April. And he is a widely known person in Russia. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows what he did. We have streets named after him. We have even in our Sibirsk city where I live right now, we have a whole subway station in, dedicated to his name. You can see the pictures of it right now on your screen. He's a great, great person who uh, contributed a lot to Russia and to the world as a whole. Next up, we have Kalashnikov. And Kalashnikov, you might know his creation, which is AK-47. He created that gun. Of course, we might debate about the outcome of his creation and all of that, but truth of the fact is that his gun is used 
everywhere when it comes to different kind of uh, um, scenes, every kind of different countries, different nations and things like that. So he was a Russian who created that gun. And lastly, uh, you might know this guy's creation and he created periodic table. You might see it in the chemistry kind of classes. You might see it somewhere on the wall. And the guy's name is Mendeleev. Mendeleev is also a Russian scientist. He was not only into chemistry, he was into other sciences as well. But his main, main thing that he contributed to the world was the periodic table of elements. And it's used, of course, everywhere. It's the standard, it's kind of the foundation of chemistry. So now you guys know a little bit about Russian culture. We are not done talking about culture just yet. We're gonna also cover traditions and different days or celebrations that we have in Russia in the future videos. So make sure that you guys follow this channel, subscribe to Be Fluent in Russian, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.